It's a place where dreams were born. Space shuttles Atlantis, Columbia, Challenger, Endeavour, and Discovery were all prepared for missions inside of the Orbiter Processing Facility known as OPF-1. When the shuttle program was active, OPFs 1, 2, and 3 were used to prepare orbiters for launch. When the shuttles landed, that's where technicians would carry out vital functions such as removing hazardous chemicals, performing needed repairs, and removing the payload. But today, it's quiet. The shuttles have become a part of history and have gone on to be displayed in museums. Peace of Mind Environmental was brought in to demolish the orbiter support structures that were built to fit the needs of the shuttle and repurposed the 29,000 square foot facility to house the spacecraft of the 21st century. We are honored and blessed to be part of history demolishing the OPF-1 orbiter support structure. The process of estimating and preparing for a project of this size is immense. We have over a thousand man hours in preparing uh, for a project like this before we even step foot on the project and start doing any of our preparation work. As always, the job starts with a safety briefing. Well, my name is John Sherwood. I'm with the IHA Environmental Health Office. Our people are here to help support your operation. Hypergol fluid is basically two chemicals that when they touch, they ignite. Uh, due to the uh, environment in space, there's no spark. So the only way that the shuttles can have a fuel system is by two liquids actually touching and then they ignite. Before we get into the structure, the lines were cleaned and certified clean, but due to the volatile nature of hypergol vapors and gases, uh, we have to ensure our worker safety by retesting all these lines to make sure that they're clean and safe for us to be working around. The next step in the process is protection. All of the floors inside the building have to be protected from the falling steel and the heavy machinery that's going to be inside the building. We install a layer of 10 mil reinforced poly sheeting first, then we install a plywood substrate on top of the poly sheeting, and then the final layer of floor protection is one inch steel plates. This ensures that all the falling steel and all the machinery coming through the building does not damage the floors. All of the steel in the, in the platforms is painted with lead-based paint. So any cutting, grinding, or sanding, torch cutting of the steel, the paint must be removed prior to that activity. There's very few points in which the steel connects back into the structure in this OPF-1, but all those areas need to be abated prior to cutting. There's also asbestos floor tile in the communication room. All of the asbestos floor tile will be removed prior to us gutting out that room. Inside the actual OPF-1 hangar, it's a multi-layer process that we have to go through to ensure the project is done in a safe manner. Utilities that are servicing the support structure must be disconnected and tagged out so nobody can get hurt. That means all the power, water, gas, hydraulic lines, communication lines, everything is severed and disconnected, therefore nobody gets hurt. Once we get into the high bay structure, we remove all of the switches, outlets, fixtures. They're reconditioned, repurposed, and recycled. We're getting ready to abate uh, the computer floor here. It's the tile and the mastic have asbestos in it. And we're gonna take it up intact. Um, so what we're doing is creating a, a negative pressure environment with our negative air machine. And we're gonna have a decon over there so uh, essentially what we'll be doing is we'll be coming in, wrapping up the floor, uh, bagging it out, taking it out to an enclosed dumpster, and then our workers will be wearing a proper PPE. They'll be coming in and out of here, and we'll mist the, the material with water. We'll stack it up. We'll uh, wrap it up with two layers of six mil, put asbestos stickers on it, and get it ready to, uh, uh, to go to the landfill. OPF-1 was built in 1978. We knew coming into this that all the paint on the support structure was painted with high levels of lead-based paint. Due to those high levels, the safest, most efficient way to perform this type of demolition is to use a hydraulic shear mounted on an excavator. The hydraulic shears are incredibly powerful. 
able to open up to four feet wide. They can rotate 360 degrees and snap steel girders like twigs. The area is secure. The shear gets to work. The operator works with surgical precision, methodically deconstructing the structure from the top down. The gantry swing arms of the OSS were built on wheels, so technicians could bring the structure about all sides of the orbiter. Not having a firm base to work against makes deconstruction more difficult. We started dumping on this side of the structure due to the close proximity of the platforms that are adjacent to the uh, structure that remains and that cannot be damaged. The structure is actually built a little stronger than I anticipated. Uh, a lot more cross members um, supporting the main structural beams, which is making it a little bit you know, harder to take apart. NASA knows how to build their stuff, because this one, is, this one is, is, uh, it's giving me a run for my money. We've now demolished the, the swing gantry ends of the platform. Those swing ends had a lot of reinforcement and X bracing that caused the demolition to take a little bit longer due to all the steel that we had to cut through. Now that we're through that area, the demolition will proceed at a much faster pace. Preparation is vital, but demolition of this scope always has unpredictable elements. It needs to be continuously reevaluated and planned. Once I demolish and clear the area behind me, I will make my way to the center of the orbiter support structure to make way so I can get to the overhead gantry cranes to bring them down safely. The overhead gantry cranes give a special challenge. Instead of being fixed to the structure, their wheels rest on the platform, making them unpredictable. John has to be careful to keep control of the cranes so they stay on the platform until he brings them down safely and in control. He brings the cranes down with precision, exactly according to plan. After a large amount of debris piles up, it needs to be sorted by material. Separate bins arrive for metals such as copper, aluminum, and stainless steel. John switches to a bucket with a grapple to lead the cleanup. The massive machine is surprisingly dexterous at selecting individual pieces. Today's a real critical day in the demolition project. We're gonna be taking down the utility bridge that has all the lines that run from one side of the orbiter support structure to the other. It's very critical that this comes down in a very controlled manner.
When the rest of the structure is demolished and the debris cleared, it's time to remove the equipment and hypergoal lines that are located below the floor. The crew strips cabling and reconditions or recycles materials. The job was extremely smooth and Peace of Mind finished two weeks ahead of schedule. I feel proud of being working in this property, definitely. Uh, where so many shuttles like Columbus, Challenger, Atlantis, you know, pass through this gate and we've been here actually making so proud.